Hi, welcome to the shop again. I'm making a video for YouTube. This is my Uncle Joseph in Cushing. He's, uh, he's one of our guests today. So he's here and tell him what you're going to do today. We're going to stain the flagpole. We're making flagpoles. Flagpoles, yeah. And who's it going to? It was to carry the Métis flag at the powwow. At the powwow in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Yeah. So my Uncle Joseph picked himself up uh, some pine, very light, has uh, beautiful knots in it. You can see the knots in it. And he's actually attaching two pieces together. So he's got another piece we're going to stay in here soon. And he's going to attach it together, and then he's going to attach his Métis flag. Métis flag we're putting yeah. on here? So he's going to attach his Métis flag to it. And uh, he's going to create this around for the Grand entrance for the, the powwow. For the grand entrance, that's that's okay. awesome. Powwow. Powwow. So he's using a uh, what am I, veritain. It's just a veritain, yeah. Veritain. It's a brown. It looks like a poopy brown, but it's it'll be nice colors. That's There's a color to it, I'm sure, somewhere. I think that it says in, it's in French. Colonial maple. Colonial maple. So yeah, there you go. It's a Really nice color, and uh, so my uncle actually had these sticks that he got out in the bush, and he put them in hot water, and he straightened them out. They were very crooked, so there's a good example of how you can straighten sticks out by soaking them. Now, how did you soak them? Did you soak them in the bathtub? In the pipe. Oh, he got pipe. himself a pipe, yeah. capped off the end, mm -hmm. the stuck them in there, and how long did they Three sit in there for? Three days he sat them in there. Uh, there's still a lot of water on the inside, which will dry. We're hoping that there's no cracking will go on, but I think with the stain, it'll hold it in, and then we're going to put a veritain on it at the end. So it'll dry for a couple of days, and then uh, we'll give it a little sand probably. And then what did you add here? You added some that's sort of... That's too thick, and it's only uh, three quarters, and I needed seven eighths. Seven eighths for his... For the tubing. For the tubing that goes on. This is a tubing then there's a spear here. And then, oh yeah, he also has a spear that he's going to attach to this. That he didn't bring, but buffalo head. Uh, and the buffalo, the yeah, buffalo head. You're going to have. And this is for my uncle that I'm going to be carving his buffalo head for that he'll have for on this stick. on this stick itself. So it's going to look pretty good when we're done. So we're just going to go ahead and finish staining uh, these last pieces, which won't take very long. So how did you get here? You got some there. I'll continue with that. So, uh, and we're just gonna go ahead and stain. How about if I get you to hold the fuck up? Or you know what? Let me just well, let's take it down and bring it over here. Yeah, it'd probably be a lot easier. So we're just gonna give it a light stain. And that's uh, enough to to cover it. We're just trying to give it color, I guess, and then we we'll want it to protect it. So. You know, it'll, it'll last for a while. Um, my uncle Joseph was also thinking of um, donating this to one of the the natives tribes, tribes when when they're done, which is a great gesture. Um, it'll, it'll look really good where they're going to hold on to it. And then he's also looking at getting some diamond willow and making them out of diamond willow, making them out of diamond willow which would be absolutely gorgeous when we're when we're done with it. My uncle will probably be in the shop with us quite often making some videos because uh, he needs a place to work. This would be this would be my, my mother's brother. So we're just gonna lightly stain this. We'll let it sit and then we'll wipe it down. By the time we're finished this one we can wipe the other one down. I think it'll be good. Uh, so in the shop we do anything. Anything that's asked for Anything that's related to crafting. So, what? Have a seat, Uncle. Yeah, absolutely. My back is. He's you know, He's also another one with back issues, aren't? Aren't we well, lucky that we have that in our family? Eh? I'm 79. 79 years old, and he's. Look at the guy. He's a kicker. Running with a scooter. Running. He loves his scooter. That's right. He loves to drive around and travel around and 
you actually lived quite a bit of places. Were you not? Where, where were you? Saint Norbert. Saint Norbert. Which Art is, Center. Did you ever live Saint out Norbert. in any other provinces? Uh, oh yeah, uh, BC. In BC. Saskatchewan. Nice. Yeah. And Ontario. Kenora, Ontario. Kenora, Ontario. Beautiful places to be. That's for sure. And I was the first one to carry the Métis flag in the color party for the Legion in Creston, BC. Creston, BC. There, that's that is very interesting. That's and also the first one to carry the Métis flag in the United States. In this, in the United States yeah. too. That's Missoula. Veterans Day. Veterans Day. Yes. I just forget the year. Well, it's been a while, right? Yeah. Um, a little history. We we are Métis. Yeah. Kirsch, the Kirshing family. Uh, my uncle has a has a different last name than than myself. My last name would be Vorio, but my my mother's maiden name is a Kirshing. My uncle is a Kirshing also. Uh, they were born and raised in Saint Germain, Saint -Germain Manitoba, which is uh, just around off the perimeter. Two miles so uh, south of the perimeter. Two miles south of the perimeter, beautiful place. Same areas. Same areas, yes. I I visited visited you, his you grandparents. Lived up there, didn't you? I was around at your mom and dad's, my grandma and grandpa's for. No, you lived on Fraser Road. I wasn't born then, Uncle. No. That, that would have been my brothers and sisters. Okay. <laughs> that would have been them. I'm I'm one of seven, and I'm the baby of that family, so I'm the lucky one. Um, yeah. So we're gonna just give this a little bit of a wiper here. We're almost done. And then we'll let it dry, this one dry, and then we will go ahead and uh, wipe down the other one. Now, I have spoken about safety in my last video. Um, you know, Verathane and, and any other kind of stains is not exactly. We, we, we should have, we should be wearing, well, safety we should have gloves. That would be the best thing to have. And how far did you, did you want to stain all this stuff no, too? No. Just up to the, up to the, uh, up up to the, the nub, eh? Okay. So we're just going to stain up to the, this little level here, and uh, we'll see what we'll give that a final coat. So, yeah, we've uh, we're working on this today, today being Friday, and then we'll be off for a while for videos because we have a wedding to go to on Sunday, and well, the weekends basically is. Is a shot weekend because we have to do stuff. And there we go. I think we have. I think we have a good coat on here. Looks good. I missed the spot on the string. No. Around the string? No, no. Where? No, right here. Oh, opposite side. This, right here. There we go. You're right. Always good to have two eyes, eh? Yep. Or at least four for us. Okay, I will handle this. Handle, hand do that. And we will hang Good, I got a lot more. All right, you <laughs> I got more. Uh... Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take the first one, Uncle, and uh, we'll take it down. And we're just going to wipe off the access just to see what it gives it a look like. That turned out. That turned out pretty nice. Has a really good color. Has a really beautiful color, and it popped out. You can see. I always love the fact that you can see the knots in here that are so beautiful. I mean, wood has all its own character, right? So we will let this one dry, and that one will give it a couple of minutes, and. Then Mostly time to say that this stuff should set for at least 12 hours. Now, there's other ways to look at it. We could sand it down. We'll have time during the during the week to do another coat on it if you want. Mm -hmm. But we'll give it a light sand mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. tomorrow mm -hmm. and then put another coat on and then we'll let it set. And then that what should size be. of paper? Uh, you know what? Two, I mean, 200. Yeah, the, the higher the higher the grit, the better. The better it'll, it'll set. We don't because we don't really need a, a low grit paper because that'll just tear into it. 
So, hi. Hi. Okay, go ahead. Sorry about that little interruption. Oh, yeah. That's our camera girl, but she's playing with her friend right now, so we're setting up our own camera. Um, yeah, the, high, the higher the grit, the rougher it is. We don't want to take off any more than we have to, so we'll use a very high grit. We can go all the way up to, yeah, two, three hundred, I think. Is, is I, any, uh, I do. I have quite a bit of paper, there's, sandpaper sitting there. There's, there's no, that's okay. It's a little warm today, I think. What, 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 did, what did we hit 32. today? 32 degrees, and that's Celsius out here. Very warm. Beautiful. 80, 86 Fahrenheit. 86 Fahrenheit, yes, you're right. That's That's warm. I know because a lot of our American friends, uh, they use their Fahrenheit and I have a friend that has, uh, he, he lives in, I think it's Alabama and he says oh. it hits 103 or something yeah. like that. I don't understand how you guys live out there because... Oh, Palm that. Spring it comes to 125. 125? Yeah. I, I that's think... That's cooking. Yeah. That's, at, that's cooking on uh, an egg on the cement weather, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, not for me. Not me. And we have our winters out here that get pretty brutal. Or we can get yeah. up to the minus 40s mm -hmm. Celsius, which is what that, that's. I think minus 40 in Celsius. It's the same as Fahrenheit. It's same as Fahrenheit. You're right. It stops. Five eighths. <laughs> Multiplier. Multiplier. Oh yeah. So the five eighths works uh, on both. Of them. Okay. So it doesn't go any different. A uh, little lesson here we're getting here. Uh, it doesn't go any different after minus oh, 40 yeah. or oh, it, yeah. does. it does but once my, minus 40 is and minus 40 Fahrenheit is Celsius it's the same but after that when it gets higher yeah and it gets higher well we know what minus 40 is we've well you've lived longer than I have and you've seen lots of bad weathers we know what that's all about uh, so you want to put this in some uh no that one's done now it's it's got uh, I these are dollar store ones so I could always um I could always get more of those which is good so I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and wipe this one down. And uh, yeah, usually I love to like to wear gloves, but I totally forgot to bring. Oops, we'll, we'll just <laughs> install that later. I forgot to bring it in. So everybody knows that wiping the excess off of uh, your 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 wood just prevents more of the clogging. Yeah. It doesn't need to set in. It's basically this is soaked in as much as it can, mm -hmm. and once it's sanded, it'll lighten up, and then we put another coat in. And you'll get all the spots out of it that are missing. Mm -hmm. um, prime example of not wiping it, wiping was down is when I showed you guys the stick. This is the cherry oak that I'm using. Uh, I did not wipe this down. It's very thick on there, but that's the effect I was looking for mm -hmm. with this stick. So that's that's the way that goes. All right, so we got that nice and wiped down. It looks good. I think we got all the access off. We had oh, that's a piece of paper over there. So we're just going to reattach our nub. What happened was is it hadn't dried all the way through, so the middle is really wet. Wet meaning that we couldn't even put a hook in there. It just basically sucks it right through. So we had to just go on the side of it and kind of give me a piece in. What we're hoping and it could happen is uh, uh, it could it could swell and crack from the water being in it um, we're hoping that it'll dry slowly it is fairly humid in here mm -hmm. so it's not as hot as outside not as hot as outside you're right that's that's brutal so we're just gonna let that sit now like I said this will take we're gonna leave it for the night which mm -hmm. I mean already it's after five I'm assuming and yeah, uh, six. yeah it's six o'clock so we're gonna give it a good 12 hours obviously we're not gonna get up at no. six in the morning to dry to do anything with it but we'll have it so it dries and then it'll go from there um, my uncle also when I remember the days where he was doing this he made wagon wheels ox carts ox carts and you complete. worked you worked you worked on the whole complete yeah. kit I made one by hand with a, wood, with a two inch chisel and a, a, a wooden mallet. No, wooden mallet? Or no, just a rubber one. A rubber mallet. There's no okay. noise. Yeah. <laughs> that works good. Is there? Yeah. My uncle actually gave me a couple of his tools that he um, that he's had. The draw knives are always, these were my uncle, 
uh, Josephs. Um, they have some age to them. Uh, still use them. They're still sharp, in fact. This one is very sharp. They're very sharp. They still have some good sharpness oh. to them. Um, these tools are absolutely amazing to peel the bark off of. Um, Did you put these handles on? No, those are your handles. Those are the ones you gave me. This would be ideal for peeling the... Peeling the bark off of, uh, off of the wood. Uh, yeah, going from this to the, the, the new age of doing this stuff. This one here, in about 10 minutes, I had to haul the bark off. And you just used a, a pocket knife or so. Yeah, just a butcher knife. Just a butcher knife. So yeah, there's. I mean, there's other options that we have smaller ones here that that can be always used too. You know how yep. much? We were at the, we saw him at the, down the road here. At yep. second hand place. Yeah. Eighty nine dollars. They are incredible, the prices that oh, they... No, 59. They, yeah, they still incredible how, how much they want for those tools. Those tools are still in use. There's a lot of people out there that are still using them for the... They, there's the, the making of a, the saw the sawhorse, yeah. which is basically a clamp that you sit uh, you sit down and it clamps the wood in place, and then that's when you yeah. use oh, the yeah, draw that's horse. A, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that, that's, that's a good little invention that's been here for a there's long one, time. There's one at the same office. Museum. The museum. And any time I want to, he says to go down there, I can take the pattern and make one. See, though, that's a good thing to have. Mm -hmm. I think the you days. Step on it. Yeah. And, that, that hold and it. it clamps it right. It holds mm -hmm. into it. I think the new age of how we do things compared to what you yourself did back when you used them was now the technology is everything's powered. Everything is electric. Like I said, I don't use as much much as the draws as I would use my grinder. The grinder. Yeah. Have a seat here, Uncle. Oh, oh. We, have, we, have, we, have, we have more time than money. So. I'm going to go for supper soon. And it'll be supper time soon for you. We'll yes. Have a bowl of cereal. Cheerio. Cereal for supper? Yep. Yeah, yes. Um, yeah, I had a sandwich for dinner. Okay. A lot of eggs. Not eggs tomorrow, but oatmeal tomorrow. Uh -huh. As long as that keeps you full. Care. I got a home care coming in to do my stuff. Well, that's breakfast. Well, that, that's good. You're not eating. My uncle lives in a, an apartment where I, my mother used to live in. They have a, they have a, sort of like a cafe, a cafeteria downstairs. A kitchen. A kitchen, yeah. They have a meal at supper time now. Okay. Which is nice. Yeah. So yeah. So we'll get back into saying that uh, when my uncle brings back some diamond willow, then we'll be. Maybe we'll yeah yeah we'll we'll show the process of how we're peeling it. Mm -hmm. um, the the Fordham is something my uncle has not used. Uh, if you mm -hmm. ever use them, so we're gonna get him to to use that and see how fast it is and easy it is to peel off the wood. Mm -hmm. uh, so much easier than just using a knife. I was I was telling everyone uh, in my last video that um, used to use the old mm -hmm. you know draw hand knives and all that. Uh, I used uh, yeah. like I said on the thing I used. Uh, Butcher knife and, and I just, just peel it through. It, then I just ripped it off. And it the was worked. And it worked perfectly. But with uh, some of that diamond willow, it might be dry, dead. Yeah, dry, diamond willow. Uh, I was I was doing some research research on, and I was talking to my uncle about that. Where diamond willow wants to rot fast. Uh, actually, the diamonds is part of a rot. rot because they live in swamp. Uh, it's a swamp issue kind of a swamp kind of a wood. And it absorbs a lot of water. Uh, I find it takes a while for it to dry. Maybe it'd be good. I did clean the diamond out and fill it with uh, some kind of compound that would harden the. That would harden the dry. Yeah. It. it takes a while. Like you're looking at anywhere from three to six months for some of the diamond willow to dry out. It all depends on your region, right? right. We're a very wet. Well, part. The, the, there the, he was walking in. Uh, Amongst the willows, it had to be pretty uh, fairly dry. Fairly dry. So okay, then that's that's good. I know that some of the diamond willow that I found is more in the swamp area. Swamp meaning yeah, it's it's yeah. very wet, damp. I mean not marsh, marshy area, really like smelly. And uh, there's a big patch of it beside Uncle Los uh, Di uh, Uncle Denison's cabin, Canoro. In Canoro. I hope to get there before she sells it. Yeah. With the ghee and bring my saw and cut some down. Get some, that'd be nice, get some nice pieces. So yeah. 
Okay, so we're going to finish off by just saying that uh, we'll work on this again another day, probably tomorrow-ish, or maybe by Monday I'll be back in the shop. Um, and we'll go from there. So thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and like. Say bye, Uncle. Bye.